start from i think let's let's start from appreciating everyone for coming on the call right um especially at a time like this um i know a couple of people would probably be on the road trying to get back home you know people are just settling back from the day's activity and it's it's a lot right especially if you live in a city like lagos like i do um but so thank you for taking the time to join um but beyond that right um i would also say i think you thank you for opening up yourself to knowledge right thank you for being inquisitive enough to say oh um let me even see what they're going to say here let me see how this is going to transform my life let me let me stop by and hear what these people have to say and that's the kind of or that's the right spirit to have right as an individual that's the right spirit to have and i'm happy that everyone is here um lastly i would like to thank the organizers the group and mr Muywa himself thank you for putting this up um you know this year i actually turned down a lot of speaking engagement but the funny thing is when he sent me an invite i had not even read it i just said yes i just read the first topic and i just said yes right it was later on and this was even before there was a date or a flyer or anything even before there was a team and i just later i was just why did i even say yes to this right because i just said this year i wasn't speaking anywhere and but when it now seems like a proper breakdown and what was i was like wow this is interesting now i know why i accepted this on the go right um because this is something that is dear to my heart i remember i was speaking to a friend earlier this year and i said we need to like bring young people together to help them understand some certain rudiments of life now by virtue of chance and by virtue of um i would say meeting people there are a lot of things i personally and a couple of others have learned that just saves you time saves you headache saves you strength and when i see a lot of young people making these mistakes i'm like you shouldn't be doing this this way you know um but the problem is there is no way to communicate that right you can't you can't message or speak to everybody differently it becomes it becomes a huge you know tax um I won't waste a lot of my time right we are seven ten into it i have like 50 more minutes so i'll just go straight into what we have today now please and please i have a tendency to talk very fast when i'm speaking especially when i'm into it so please if i begin to go very fast just call my attention to it um but i promised myself that i'll keep this very very plain and very simple I won't talk about a lot of things i'll be honest with you i won't talk about a lot of things but i'll talk about a few things and i will spend time talking about those few things a lot now i believe that the other facilitators i've known mr May, um, mr yusuf for uh, mr um what's his name now am i forgetting why did his name disappear all of a sudden um hey, buddy. yes I've known him for a very long time. I remember we had a program back in the university and we invited him to come and speak. That's to tell you that he's somebody that is really, really sound and he's someone you will learn. He's somebody I look up to, right? Even for me as a person. And then I've also known that you're also to be very, very good at what she does. So you are in for an exciting time. And what I'm just, I'm a forerunner, right? I'm just trying to prepare the ground, right? And that's what I'm going to do today. Um, so once again, thank you for coming. Now. Um, I'm going to say this also. Um, I believe everyone here, uh, we are people of faith, right? There was a recent report that says oh, Nigerians like to pray a lot. So please, we are people of faith, and I would just like to say a few words of prayer if you don't mind. Now, I know we are from different faith, or we could be from different faith. I don't really know the statistics of everybody on the call, but no matter the faith you profess, we all believe in prayer because we know the exponential power of prayer. So I'm just going to say a few words, and then we get straight into it. So. Thank you, God, for this opportunity. Thank you for bringing everyone and for the privilege to speak. And Lord, all I ask for is insight as we as we just embark on this journey. All I ask for is insight. I ask that um, knowledge to take actions, knowledge to you know live a better life. You would impart into everyone listening. Thank you, God. In Jesus' name, we pray. Right. Um, so we'll just go straight into it and. Let me know if you have questions, put down your questions. We'll take questions at the end of the section um, so that we don't interrupt the section and then we could cover a lot of grounds. All right, great. Um, I'll just share my screen now. I might have to turn off my video when I share my screen so that there is no lag um, in between. 
if you don't mind. Uh, but let me know when you can see my screen. Ooh. All right. Um, let me see. Give me a minute. Can you see my screen now? Yeah, it's coming up. Okay, great. Um, all right, great. Um, let me try and put this on full screen. Great. So today we have something really interesting ahead of us to discuss, and we're moving from chaos to clarity, right? And I think a lot of you might have questions. I I remember Mr. Moyiwa shared with me um, some of the things that participants are registered, you know had in mind for coming here or for joining this call and some of those things are really really true and there are things that i believe that many of the facilitators who will be speaking including myself have experienced we've gotten to some of those junctions in life like oh what do i do after school you know how do i navigate life you know how do i get a clearer picture of life how do i handle certain situations how do i make money for example or how do I make sure that I'm, you know, how do I just make sure that I'm living a good life, right? Um, with all of the uncertainties that surround or that is even involved in living in a country like Nigeria, for example. If you live in other developed world, you might not be too worried about certain things because they've been provided for, right? So your life easily transitions from one phase to another. Um, but if you live in Nigeria, which you live in Nigeria, transition from or transitioning from one phase of your life to the next phase of your life will require you to sit down and ask a lot of questions and give yourself some honest answers and also pray that a lot of things align for you well right um but in the quest to help you understand or come to a reasonable answer that's why programs like this come up right um to give you unconventional wisdom that helps you you know overcome certain orders quickly you know, without strain. As I say, it's best to learn from others' experience than to, you know, experience it yourself. You just waste a lot of time. Now, that does not say that experiencing things yourself is the wrong thing. No. Um, I think we'll get later into we'll get into that. Don't let me go ahead of myself. So once again, um, welcome into the section. Um, so a bit about me. I think anytime you find me anywhere doing anything, these five things captures everything I do. Idea, product, growth, lover. And a countryman i love my country so much i plan to be president of nigeria one day let me just put that out here i plan to lead nigeria as a country one day um and beyond that i love people um i think I'm, i would say i'm a people lover um and there's a reason for that also because um for me greatness cannot be achieved as an individual greatness for me the way i define greatness is when you go with a team when you achieve something remarkable with with a group of individuals that you know you started from scratch right and for those who know me outside here you that's why i have a slogan that says that um you know um we will not be small forever right because i just believe that over time as we begin to evolve as individuals and as a group you know we will become better the nation will be better for it you know africa will be better for it but to make all of this happen you know you have to have bright ideas you have to build great products and you have to grow them to become you know something that is economically variable so in short five things those are the things that describe me and currently what i'm doing is building schooly and it's interesting because i think schooly started from a place of the idea behind schooly started from a place of chaos i'll be honest with you guys right the idea the brain behind schooly the reason why i started schooly was from a place of uncertainty right and i'll tell you why while i was in school i studied at um one of the best no the best state university in nigeria Laute. i'll be proud of that um and while i was in school right i'm not from a well-to-do family let's be honest with ourselves so in being in school was like more of a struggle you know you had to do your own thing just to make sure that you get school fees paid and all of that and money was not really coming from home. So 
we just had to do what we had to do to survive, right? And then it was a journey. It was a beautiful journey. Came out of school, um, helped as many people as I can. While I came out of school, um, I think I keep getting calls from people back in school and say, hey, I've not paid my tuition. Can you help me? Can you do this? And I could help as few people as I can. But then I've been working for like two, three years. No, two years now, then, right? One day I was just, I got a call from somebody who said, oh, I've not been able to pay my tuition, right? And my exam is coming up. So I was able to like rally around, like get a couple of cash from some friends and then that was paid. Like two days later, somebody else called me and said, hey, I've also not been able to pay my tuition. I'm like, at this point, this cannot continue, right? But at that day, it was not, I was just struggled because this, these are people that I love, right? Um, and I would definitely want to see them prosper. So I was just troubled and one day, it was, it was more like the spirit just moves around and said, you know what, you know you can do this on a large scale. You can help people on a large scale. I'm like, I don't even have funding. I'm not ready to start an NGO. That was the first thing that came to mind. I don't know. I don't have money for now, I don't know why I'm sharing this story. You might help somebody, right? On your path to finding the next step, right? So this might just help you. And I'm just like, oh, I'm not ready to start an NGO or anything. I'm not ready to start looking for money to help people. I was like, no, people are struggling. Why are people struggling with their school fees, right? They need help. And I started thinking about, okay, what about if we start a scholarship program? What about this? What about that? Oh, this is not going to work. So yeah, it was just then, it started making sense day by day. And then I know, okay, so the icing on the cake was, this was back late last year, right? And then I was speaking to a very close friend of mine and we were making December plans for last year. I was like, oh, something, I can't make plans with you because I've not been paid my salary for like two months, November and December. And this is somebody who teaches in one of the big secondary schools in Lagos. I'm like, no, you can't be serious. You're joking. I'm like, oh, the school is suffering because parents are not paying tuition. I'm like, no, we. If this can't be happening at university and be happening, you know, at at secondary and primary. And then that's where the idea of school came out. We have to find a bridge. And that bridge was okay. Parents, parents receive their salary on a monthly basis. It becomes difficult to pay school fees at once. Can we help parents pay that school fees and then they pay us back every month? That's just the simple idea behind schooling. So we just give loans to the parents, but the way we offer our loans is we, we pay on behalf of the parent to the school and then the parents can get to pay us back on a monthly basis. So that's just the brain behind um, schooling. But then what I want you to take away from there is we started a section already. What I was want you to take away from there is don't, don't live life for yourself. Like be involved in other people's problem. That's how you build greatness in life one of the ways you build great that's not the only way that, oh, that's that's one of the way you build greatness in life right be involved with other people's problem don't say oh you have this nigerian mentality that is not my business or if it's not there's this other thing that oh if it's not bringing me money i don't care right don't don't have that mindset now these are just again these are unconventional wisdom this is something that somebody else would just say don't don't live like that but the truth is, if you want to be somebody's great, you have to be ready to solve problems for millions of people, right? So always have that mindset. If you see somebody facing challenges, ask, how can I help? And even if there's no way you can help, go back and start thinking, how can I solve this, right? Solving problem is how you become, you know, significantly better in life. Let me, let me just put it that way, right? And then the people you solve their problem will love you and cherish you, and then they will be there for you, right? Because... We all have faces in our lives, right? There is, there is always going to be these seven years of plenty and seven years of scarcity, right? It is what you do with your seven years of plenty that matter. The people you help, the people you showed love to, the problem you solve their problems, they will be the ones that will be there for you in your seven years of scarcity. Now, I'm already taking too long on this slide. What am I going to be speaking on today? I've taken like a lot of time. What am I speaking on today? Be prepared to keep moving forward. Now, my, my screen is on full screen so i really cannot see what's happening on the background so let me know if my if probably there's a glitch and you guys can't hear me or something is happening please somebody should just signal and let me know right because i think google needs to improve on this i've been saying that right is a problem um there should be like a small window anyway let's leave that i'm not into product right here right so be prepared to keep moving forward now i know things are chaotic i know things are um things are tough especially in the country, I know a lot of things are um, not the way sh they should be. I'm sorry, can you guys give me a minute, please? I hope you don't mind. 
Yeah. Sorry, please just give me a minute. Sure, no um, something just popped up. So let's try to reach out to our capability partner. All right. Um, I'm back here. Sorry about that. I uh, yeah. needed to really fix something that came up. Okay. Um, let me go back to my screen. All right, great. Um, can you still see my screen? Yes. All right. So quickly, in the next, I think I have like, um, how many minutes more? Yeah, I have like 40 more minutes. In the next... 38 minutes, I'll be speaking on be prepared to keep moving forward, right? Be prepared to keep moving forward. And I chose this topic because recently I was I was, I was, I was at an event and the MD of MCM, FCMB Bank said something. He said, I hear people complaining like, oh, Naira is now 1,300 to the dollar. The, Niger the market is crashing. This blah, 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 blah. And people are saying, oh, things are bad. But when was things good? Because last year, even when Nera was 700, we were complaining that things are bad. Two years ago, when Nera was 1,500 Nera to, to, you know, a dollar, we still say things are bad. When it was 300, things are bad. Do you understand? He showed us the progression up until the 90s. You know, when one, one dollar was one Nera. People in those era to complain that things are bad. But he said, the truth is this, even in each era of so-called difficulty, people progresses. That's when people build their businesses. That's when people, you know, um, build banks, build businesses that are solid. Things are bad, things are bad, but a lot of people are succeeding and moving forward. So he said, it is all in the mindset. Don't get caught in that trap of saying, oh, it is, it is in quote, it is woke to say things are bad. This is not like a Nigerian culture to say things are bad. But the truth is deep down, if you focus on the right things, you would notice you not. it's not that bad, right? And you're living in your best moment. Right now, I don't know what Niger... Think, well, on the outside, things look bad, but I tell to myself that I'm living my best moment this year. And it's not because I'm running a school or I'm running a, a, a company, no. In fact, that's, if we are to use that as a measure, I wouldn't even say things are bad. I wouldn't say things are good. I would say things are bad. But no, it's it's the it's the mindset and the culture of thought that you have built within yourself and around yourself. So be prepared to keep moving forward. Right now, I would speak on. Oops, 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 oops. Uh, I move this. I'm moving so fast. Okay. What's happening? <laughs> okay, great. Okay. So I'll speak on four things. Value every experience. Do not be ashamed. Keep digging wells. Recipe for recommendation. I'll talk on those. I said I'm not going to do a lot on. I'm not going to talk on a lot of things. These are just four things I'll talk about briefly. And I would like to ask questions, right? Um. But I believe that if you pay attention to these four things with your life and you value these four things and you put them to use, you will be significantly better. You would be noticeably better. Do you understand? The way, the way you see things and the way people see you would change, right? See, life is not that hard. If you study life itself, and do certain principles. Life is about principles. If you follow them, you'll be fine. Right? And it's just like, just with life is with your health. If you follow certain principles with your health, under normal circumstances, certain things won't happen to you. Right? Um, but we won't go there today. So number one, let's go straight into it. Number one, value every experience. Right? Value 
every experience. How do I start with this? I wish I, I wish we could have like a Q and A section right now. I would just like to ask, what what do you refer to as a mistake? Now, I know we've all said, oh, I made a mistake. I made a mistake. But what exactly is a mistake? If I ask you now, what what do you define as a mistake? Right? And basically, is oh, maybe I make a wrong decision somewhere, or I wasn't supposed to say something. I said that, or I wasn't supposed to do something. I did it. That's what you call a mistake. And you are not wrong, right? Even if you check your dictionary, you're not wrong, right? That's that's what a, mis a mistake is, a wrong judgment, you know, a misguided maybe communication, a wrong act, you know, just doing something that is inappropriate at that moment. Now, I use the word at that moment because that's, that's what you see, right? So you call it a mistake. However, you will discover that over time, in the next maybe five years, 10 years, by the time you start thinking back, sometimes you will notice that you are grateful for those things. Do you know why? They were not mistakes per se. They were experiences. And in the moment, it looked like a mistake. But the truth is, they were experiences that if you never had, you would know better. So there are things that you have to do wrong in life. Let's, let's be honest with ourselves. These are, I'm going to say some things that are not logical, unconventional, right? You have to do some things wrong. If you don't do them wrong, you won't know how to do them right, right? You, will, you have to do things. If there was not 1,000 failed experiments, the way that, there's not going to be a light bulb. Do you understand? That's why I say you have to value each experience. Now, while I was preparing for this, something popped up in my head and said, oh, but our experiences are not always good. We've had bad experiences. We've had terrible experiences. We've had experiences that we can't even say, right? And I'll be very blunt here. There are people who've had experiences where they've been lied against and it cost them a lot of things. There are people who've had experiences of betrayal. There are people who have experiences of, of even denial. There are people who have, you know, been abused, whatever form of abuse, right? There are people who have gone through terrible things as an experience. So why am I saying value such experiences? Does it make sense if I've been abused, if I've been, let's even use the word, being abused sexually is not even the only abuse, right? There are a lot of, but let's even, which is easy to understand. Let's say you've been even abused sexually or you've been denied of something that truly is yours or you've been betrayed. How is, how, why should I value that? That experience, why should I value it, right? Now, I will tell you why you should value it. You will value it because the truth is, it wasn't a pleasant experience, but it was an experience that had happened. Now, what comes out of that experience would either make or break you. Let's be honest with ourselves. We're a product of the decision we make but we are only a product of that decision because we have had several experiences. You know that if you put your hand into a candle, that is, a naked light from a candle that is burning, it would burn you. Why well, you've probably experienced it or somebody have told you of that experience, right? So touching a burning candle, would you wouldn't do it, right? But a child would try to do it, right? Because that child doesn't have that experience yet and has not been told. Now, where am I going is this, every experience, good or bad has a way of shaping who we become and you see either you made a mistake or you didn't make a mistake every experience helps us to become if properly honest that's what i wrote in my notebook if properly honest help us to become a better version preparing us for the next experience because in life, you would keep moving from one experience to the other. You, it won't stop until you're dead. Let's be honest with ourselves. You will get some things right, you get some things wrong. And then you learn from that and you move to the next experience. These experiences will come in multiple shapes, size, form, you know, as you progress in your journey in life, as you move from, you know, you know your life is in phases, right? As you move from, oh, for example, when you're in school, that's a phase of your life. You have several experiences in school. The day you leave school, 
and you go for the mandatory one year um, course service, that's an experience, right? You move from there and you go to, you start working and then you start preparing for early life, early family life. That's an experience in its own. That's a phase of life that comes with a lot of experiences in itself. So as you move from those places, you would, how would I call it? You would have in moment lessons that sometimes is good. If it's good, then you won't call it a mistake. But if those in moment lessons are bad, then you call it, oh, I've just made a mistake. Because in that moment, you have just made a mistake or what looks like a mistake. But in court, these things help to shape and present our present and future experiences, right? Now, why am I saying this? With each experience that you've had, I want you to sit and always evaluate them. Actions and consequences with each experiences. Think back, oh, there was a time I experienced this. What action led to that? And why? what consequences or reward did I get from it? See, even if you had good experiences with certain things, ask yourself, what action led to it? And what reward did I get from it? If you made a mistake, what action led to it? And what consequences came from it? If this is the consequence and it came from this action, if I flip this action, would the consequences change? Right? Or if, if I... Tweak a thing, a thing or two from this action, will the consequences change? Please, in all you do, as you progress in life, always check for actions and consequences as you experience life. It will guide, see, it will guide you. It will save you from a lot of things. Oh, I'm about to go out now. I'm just giving an example. I'm about to go out now. Should I go with public transport? Should I go with my own car? Or should I order an Uber? You are just about... Because that day in itself is an experience. The entirety of everything you want to do that day is an experience. How you plan to move around would determine some... would have some rewards and consequences. Let's be honest with ourselves, right? Now, I'm just trying to paint a picture in our mind. And that's why you have to value every experience that you have encountered in life. Some are good, some are bad. Because they will connect in the future. Again, every experience you're having now will connect in the future. It might not look like, oh, it makes sense now. No. It will connect. Have you not heard people say, oh, it was because I suffered this, that's why I started this, and today I'm prospering because of this. If they never had that experience, they would never be where they are today. Or maybe they will be there, but in a different light. Right? Why? Because they are now unless the experience they had into becoming something that probably solves a problem for somebody else or prevents somebody else from having that experience. Right? You will see people who manufacture, say, I was trying to do this. And I, of, so, for example, if you're in the startup world or the business, or some people say, Oh, I. I was trying to do this and I discovered that it was impossible to do this. So I just said, oh, why, why not build this? I started schooling because of my experience. Do you understand? But if I had a wrong mindset and say, oh, why are my parents poor? Or why, why is this happening to me? Why couldn't I be born in a rich family? Or why is this? Why is that? And I started coming at it from a wrong mindset. I have not annexed that experience rightly. I have made... I would say in that moment, what looked like a mistake with money, especially, for example, I used to work with a company. One of my first companies I worked with was in the stock market, right? So I knew a lot about the stock market. So I had invested a couple of money, but I had lost a lot of money too, right? But guess what? In that moment, there was a time I lost a lot of money. In fact, well, my entire life savings, right? And I just said, Jesus, what, what have I done? But guess what? At that moment, it was one of the most terrible things I've done. But guess what? Now, I am thankful for that experience. Do you know why? There are some things if you tell me, and I just know it doesn't work that way. There are some things that, oh, by just virtue of that experience, I am a better person. I'm taking too long here, but I want you to get it. Your experiences shape your life. However, the way you react to that experience, I think this is even 
the way you react to that experience becomes how your life turned out to be. I hope you get that. I will give one scenario and I will move on quickly from here. Once again, I said, by privilege of position while I was in school, I had the privilege to like speak to a lot of people and a lot of people share their burdens and their problems and their you know, experiences with me. But I noticed something now. In the moment while I was in school, I couldn't do this. But after several years of leaving school, I started putting all these experiences people share with me into perspective and you know, dividing them. It was not like I was doing a, a case study approach. And then I discovered that, permit me to give this example out of all honesty, right? So that we can learn. I discovered there were some set of ladies who would tell me, oh, right now my parents are not giving me a single naira. They just told me, go to school and sort out your life. And they are struggling. Like, they are struggling. Many of them have not even paid tuition for like three years. They don't even have what to eat. Some people have, are mandatory, they are fasting. Not because they want to fast, like they don't have food. And they're all in school. But guess what? With people having that experience, some now decided, oh, do you know what? I'm just going to go get a job, start a farm. I have a friend who went to start a farm because there was money was not coming from anywhere. And he got somebody to give him a piece of land. He begged for it. And some even begged for a piece of land inside the school. And they started farming, making some hens meat. And some even went to work. But guess what? I have people who made that same experience and as ladies, I said, do you know what? I'm just going to sell my body for money. Now, I'm I'm not going, I'm not trying to demine or undermine anybody. No, I'm trying to help you understand how the way we view our current experience can shape how we live. That's all I'm trying to say. And for every action, there's always a consequence or reward. All I'm saying is, as you go through life, we're talking about chaos I'm moving from chaos to clarity. And one of the ways to move from there is sit down and evaluate your current experience. See how you can make better actions or better decisions from those experiences to shape a new life for yourself. Now, I'll stop there and move to the next thing. And the next thing here is don't be ashamed and don't live in fear. Don't be ashamed and don't live in fear. See, don't be ashamed to tell your, yourself that, oh, I messed up. Don't be ashamed to tell or to tell people that, oh, or to even tell yourself the truth first. I say, for example, I, I tell people I'm from a very poor home. Believe it or not, or take it or not, that, that, I can't change it because it's, my, it's more like my past. I, I, I can't control what the reality of my parent, where I was born into. But... It's, it's, it's more like a pass, right? I tell people, there are things I've done that are bad, and I, I say it with all boldness. I'm not ashamed of it. you know why? I have learned from that experience, and it has shaped me to become a better person. So please, don't say, oh, there are people who are ashamed of their weight. There are people who are ashamed of their body shape. There are people who are ashamed of their finances. There are people who are ashamed of you know, the life they are living right now. There are people who are ashamed of their present results. There are people who are ashamed of a lot of things in their life. And because of that, they live in fear of, oh my God, with this result, will I ever get a job? With this, with, with, with this, my body, will I ever get a, will I ever get a wife or an husband? With this, my this, will, will this happen? No, please don't do that. You would, permit me to say you will ruin your life if that's the way you think. Please and please don't be ashamed of whatever circumstance or situation you find yourself, no matter how bad it might look. Don't. Always have a time to sit down, reflect, and say, what can I do better? What should I change? Who should I talk to? Do you understand? Who should I talk to? Where, sh where should I find myself? Where can I be helped? It is in the process of this thought, this self-reflection, that you begin to gain clarity. So don't live in fear. Don't, don't live in the past. Don't be ashamed of your current circumstance. No. Here, I'm going to talk, I'm going to just mention a few things about this, uh, Madam C.J. Walker, right? She, she all, I've read a few things, I've read a few things about her. She always say, I'm, I'm, 
never ashamed of my humble beginnings. I'm never ashamed of my past. Right? She she was somebody that let me just give you a view. A, please, after today, go and read about Madam, you know, CJ Walker. Please take your time and read about her. Right? She's somebody that you know she she was born now she's she was born in the 18th and in the 18th you know it i think 1867 or so but this is where i'm going right she was born into slave trade her parents were slaves in those days in america you know farming on a plantation she was born into slave trade. she herself became a slave and then you know by age seven her parents had died in slavery because of hardship had died in slave trade so she became an orphan at age seven and then uh the slave masters you know sold her out to marry her to somebody at age 14. she became pregnant gave birth she was being molested abused or you know all the kind of bad things that can happen to you right and by 20 she had a child and then she had to run away you know from the farm and the man they married her to because of several kind of abuse to herself and to her child you know just imagine all the bad things you've seen the movies right all the bad things that happened to you know black people in those in those days in all of that right she ran away at age 20 and then she got a job somewhere else where she was now you know a washwoman she washed clothes and all of those things and that's what she did for like 10 years right but i think i i, I was reading from from the author that i was reading from among people who described that later said she always had a different view of life that even in the midst of all those chaos, she always had a different view of life. And that's what I want us to get. Don't See, don't be ashamed of, oh, this has happened to me. I've had this experience. I've had this. No. Your experiences don't define you. Your experiences shape you, but they don't define you. Why? Because I could have this experience today and I, can, I could have moved on from there, learned from it, move on from there, and then it begins to shape who I become in the future good or bad now i'm going to be honest good or bad so what happened to this woman from there because she just said to herself this can't be all right she said like doing many other jobs to take care of herself and her little girl and from there she met um she met a pharmacist that she became a cook for she started cooking for the pharmacist see life has a way of giving you options and then life will watch you life will give you option a and b and A and B will lead to different paths. A will lead to Lagos. B will lead to, let's say B leads to Oshogu, right? Life will watch how you react. If you take A, life will give you another option. After taking A, one of it will still take you deeper into Lagos. The next will still give you an option to Oshogu. If you take the one that leads deeper into Lagos, life begins to cement your, your, your actions into Lagos completely because that's the path you are following right now i hope i'm not talking too fast and i hope i'm not like rushing things um, but as she continued to evolve right life started presenting her with more options so imagine you move from slave trade you ran away you started washing clothes for people then you found somebody who needed a cook and you started cooking fortunately for you the person you know was a pharmacist and then you started learning chemistry from the person and how to mix different chemicals and then this was an era where you know there was there was a lot of people were going bad you know they, they were losing their air there was dandruff and all of that and she she herself started like okay let me make this can i make this i started making different chemicals and ointments and then one day she came up with an ointment that cured dandruff do you understand and then that was how she started that business of making, you know, ointments and oils and products that cures dandruff. Now, this is somebody who, whose life had been, you know, beaten and battered and, you know, she had had it tough. But because she never had this mindset of, because I'm from this place, because I've been treated this way, I'm not going to do anything with my life. No. And see, life is not going to be easy on you. If I tell you, Oh, this year alone, I've cried many times. There are many times that I'm just in my room crying. There are many times that I could not sleep in the middle of the night and I cannot even stay awake because you know, you're staying awake, you're crying. And, or you're, and you can't even sleep, right? But I'm not going to say because of that, I'm going to maybe give up on what I'm doing. No, because life is not going to be fair on anyone. However, life will give you options. And you can choose to take those options and keep moving forward. 
that's that's why i'm sharing this with you because you can you can just say oh because of what i'm experiencing i'm just going to stay where i am no you keep asking yourself what's the way forward what's the next thing what's the next thing what's the next and you keep moving the more you move the more the doors open and you find your best, yourself in a better place she says to herself i can't keep suffering this 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 humiliation this this abuse and she ran away from there she started trying to okay from washing clothes to cooking from cooking to making her own first product and this is america she's a female a black female where even the guys who are male female who are male black people were you know were killed were sent into slavery she started saying okay do you know what i'll even start my own business guess what she ended up employing over twenty-five thousand people and she became the first black american woman to become a millionaire right she became extremely rich why she, she wasn't living in her past she wasn't living she wasn't ashamed of who she was they shaped her experiences and those experiences helped her to become a better person i'll go to the next thing see which which is i'm just going with with a progression keep digging wells and keep keep digging wells and you know keep scattering your seed permit me to go back into the scripture a bit right and I, I I love it a lot. This this part, and it has become a watchword for how I live my life. Right. Immediately I found this scripture. I just held on to it for many years, and I still hold on to it. Right. Keep digging wells. And for here, I'm I'm using a case study of a man called Abraham. Now, if you're not if you're not a Christian by faith, I'm sorry, but permit me to just that that's the best way I can convey this message. Abraham was a man who was doing well was a farmer and had many sheep had many flocks and he would dig a well and sometimes they won't find water after digging for many days they won't find water but you know what he never stopped they would dig another well either they find water or not they would dig the next well until they found water and then they could feed their flocks and water their farm now you might say well, what does this have to do? anything would do see there are many things you would do and you will fail I count them as digging wells. There are many things you will try your hands upon and you will fail. Don't stop. Nobody tries something once and succeed. They've lied to you. If anybody says, ah, the first time I just tried, it just worked, boom, and boom, I'm successful. It's a big lie from somewhere. I've never seen. I've studied a lot of wealthy, successful, rich. No, I've never seen it. No. Even maybe you should take time and read the story of people like, you know, um, Elon Musk, you know, even people like Bill Gates, and you know that it wasn't it wasn't a one time story, no, right? But what am I saying? Keep digging wells. Keep, you failed a course, take it again. Don't have that mindset I'm a failure. No, just take it again. Oh, you came out of school with a worse result. It's fine. What can I do better? Now I'm out of school. Can I get excuse that doesn't require my results? Don't leave. I've said, don't be ashamed of your past. Don't. Oh, don't say because oh, I came up with a result that is bad. I will just resign to faith and any kind of job I get, I get and I move on. No. Ask, tell yourself, what can I do to put me in the kind of future I see myself? Do I need to take trainings? Do I need to take courses? Do I need to move with certain kind of people? Do I need to learn from certain kind of people? And nobody's out of your reach. Everybody's a message away. If you compose the right message let me say that here. please write it down nobody's out of your reach everybody's a message away from you if you compose the right message that has been what has helped me the most this year nobody is out of your reach they are just a message away and messaging is easy now find them on social media they would have one social media no matter how they will have one if they don't have one they'll have an email or they'll know somebody that knows somebody that knows somebody give the person a letter nobody either in nigeria or out of nigeria is out of your reach they are just a message away from you now let's go back to digging wells please dig wells don't stop at one don't stop at two. abraham did many wells and found water in just a few and that's why the bible says scatter your seed in the morning even in the evening do not be idle because you don't know which one will succeed either this one or that or both will succeed equally it's just like a farmer planting seed. Some will plant on a stone ground. Keep planting. 
what are those seeds in this case what are those seeds those seeds are things you do for example i had a friend who said oh i'm into business but somebody saying telling me to come and learn farming and i told the person would this take a lot of your time he said no it's just one or two things i will just stop by every saturday he said do you have any other thing that is extremely more valuable he said no he said please go and learn farming why it doesn't make sense now see life will present you with certain options they don't make sense now in the future they will add up oh i wish i could tell us the story of steve jobs how he took a class in design he just tumbled on it and he said oh let me just take this class while he was in school and that was how they went now it was when he started up with now made sense now the apple is one of the most designed products in the world the best designed product in the world right but he just tumbled into that class he had nothing to do with it life will present you with opportunities take them they are small small see don't wait for that's the thing don't wait for big opportunity take the small small things Oh, today your friend is saying, Oh, I'm learning online marketing. Please learn it. You are you are a, you are a medical doctor, but learn that online marketing. As long as it will not cost you that cost, if it's in your free time. And please be diligent with time. I think I just need to say a few of these things. Be diligent with time. Don't sleep. Even the Bible says a man that sleeps will end up in poverty. Do you understand? See, don't be idle. Keep digging wells. Keep scratching your seed one day in the future those dots will connect i'm not trying to do aspire to inspire no but these are the true things in life i had the privilege when i was in school to learn coding for example but i didn't i just like oh, i'm just going into business i'm never going to need coding or i'll hire people trust me one of the things i regret the most this year is i never learned coding oh programmers showed me shaggy this year i'm sorry to use vulgar old language but they showed me hell why? Because you just thought I don't know what I'm doing. So now I'm learning how to code. I don't plan to be a programmer, but I need to have the basics. But I had the privilege. I had a friend who was coding then. And I could have just paid attention. Why didn't? Right? That's why I said, see, no matter what life presents you at this moment, learn from it. Don't shy away from things. Don't shy. And you're, that's why being prudent and being diligent is one of the ways to succeed. Easiest way to succeed. Let me check my time. Let me see how many more minutes I have before I continue. Okay. Woo! I have like five more minutes. So, again, keep digging wells. Don't stop at one. This doesn't work. Move to the next. Now, I'm not saying don't try that thing again, but move on. Keep trying. Keep trying. Try new things here and there. Try new things here and there. Scatter your seed. Don't say, oh, because I've applied for this job once and I'm not getting it, I won't apply again. No. Oh, don't do that. I don't know if there's anybody who is seeking a job here. Don't do that. See, there are times I will apply for a job by mail and they'll say no. I will go and message the HR on LinkedIn. Say, please, I'm trying to get this job. Or I'll go and message the CEO of the company. The CEO will now say, ah, oh yeah, message, message HR. I've messaged HR on your behalf, talk to HR. I've seen people who have gotten a job that way. In fact, that's where I recommend you getting a job. If you want to get a job in Nigeria, please don't, don't do these things people do. You waste your time. Whatever company you want to get it, let me just chip this in. It might help somebody. If you are if you are just a fresh graduate and you are trying to get a job, please, this is how to get a job. Look for an industry you like the most and you think that you can make the most relevant. Write out six companies in that industry. For example, if you want to work in, in the financial industry, there are banks, there are fintechs, there are investment houses. Write out names of companies in those places. Oh, write out the name of three bank, write out the name of three fintechs, write out the name of three investment bank. That's nine, Abby. Now, go on LinkedIn and look for the, com the CEOs of those nine companies, the HR managers of those nine companies, the department head of those nine companies. So let's say you want to work in marketing, for example, in the, fi in the, in the financial industry. Who is the head of marketing? Write in their names down. Write a good message. Send it to all those people. If you do, if you have been diligent in the past in building skills, you'll get a job with one of them. Many of them will see your message and not reply. Please don't move on. But let me tell you the truth. If you have been diligent, you'll get a job. In fact, let me not lie to you. That's how I got my first job. I've told people that know me, I've told the story. That's how I got my first job. I said, this is the industry I'm going. I looked for all the companies in that industry. 
look for their CEO, message all their CEO. I messaged five companies, message five CEO. Three replied me. I got an interview with two. One employed me. Simple. I will not say more than that. As I've told you, scatter your seed. Don't, don't, don't let me. I have very limited time. Let me keep going. Now, last thing I'm going to say, the recipe for recommendation. This kind. Again, recipe for recommendation. What do I mean by recommendation? One of the greatest steps to move fast in life is by recommendation from other people. I'll say it again. If you want to move very fast in life, make sure people can recommend you. And how can people recommend you? Leave people and places better than how you met them. Oh, let me say that again. If you want people to recommend you in life, make sure when they met you, the first time they met you and after they've met you, they are a better person. It doesn't happen once, but make sure that over the experience, they are a better person. Make sure that if you're in a place, after leaving that place, the place is better. Oh, we all watched the World Cup and they, I think it was the Japanese and they would always clean up the side of the stadium that they stayed. They will leave the place better. I do some things and people think, oh, why can't I just eat something? And no, I'll keep it in my bag or keep it in my pocket. The place has to be better. I will clean the place. Small, small things. Leave places and people better than you met them. It will leave an impression in people and those people would recommend you later in the future. When people, when you've heard some billionaires say that or some people rich successful people say it's not money you need to be successful and they are not lying. Now, as a poor person, you say, oh, oh, no, it's money you need to be successful. It's because they have money. That's why they are saying that. No, because they know that what you need to be successful is people, not money. It's people. Well, I'm not very rich, so I believe you should take it from me. If rich people are saying it and you don't take it from me, I'm, I'm not very rich. But if I tell you that it is what you need to become successful in life, it's not money, it's people. Even when you want to start a business, it's people you need, not money. Because somebody can go and tell somebody that, ah, this guy is trying to start a business and he doesn't have money. And if ah, I have money, I'm not using it, let me borrow him. It's people. One of the major breakthroughs I had was, this year was, oh, somebody said, oh, something you're trying to do is, oh, that's nice. Ah, let me talk to you. Let me talk to this person. Hold on. And the person called me and said, ah, somebody told me you are doing this, blah, 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 blah. How can I help you? People. People. The recipe for recommendation is treating people better. Be humble. Be peaceful with people. Don't fight unnecessary fights. Don't keep unnecessary malice. I, there's this thing down that is trending. Oh, if it's affecting my mental health, please stop all this. Don't let me say bullshit of mental health. Hey, my mental health, my this, my that. It's just been woke. People are trying to hide their laziness under mental health. People are trying to hide their lack of discipline under mental health. People are trying to lack their level of non-commitment under mental health. Stop all of that. It's not going to get you far. When have you heard Big Gates talk about mental health? When have you talked Elder Elomox talk about Elomox manages three or four companies? When have you heard him talk about mental health? When have you heard any successful person talk about mental health? It's just the lazy generation that keeps saying it. Now, am I saying that there are not things that trouble your mental health? Yes. Both. There are some things in life that are normal. You going through stress is normal. You not have money when you are starting out is normal. Stop saying it's mental health or something is affecting your peace. No. There are some difficulties you encounter in life. They are normal. Stop saying it's disturbing your peace. Stop saying it's affecting your mental health. No. It's all these things I see. I don't want to say young people because I'm still young. All these things I see on social, I'm just like, why are you, why are you lying to people? Okay? So, again, if you want to be great, you need people to recommend you. And for people to recommend you, the recipe is this. Or the secret to people recommending you is this leave people and places better than you met them if you get to a new organization the people you meet there the the office you are you work in i when i mean office now i do not mean the fiscal i mean the position the role leave that role better let them say oh something was the best business manager we have all of my ceos still call me and say something alpha what do we do with this Samson was the best business manager we have. Samson was the best partnership manager we have. I tell people, 
all of my CEOs that I worked under, they all still call me and ask for advice. See, it is not by, it is by diligence. Let's just say that word. You have to be a diligent person. Okay, these are again we're talking about unconventional wisdom you have to, this these are the things that get you high in life i told you earlier that i was speaking i think my time is up now i'm eating into the question time but i'll just take this last thing i told you earlier i was in a meeting and the md of fcmb was there fcmb bank there was other big people successful people and one of them told yes i think the current head of country head of junior pay he said he said what people don't know is i failed were ahead this is a man sharing his story. He's, Junior Pay is one of the biggest payment companies in Nigeria. And he's ahead. He said, I failed why? Right? And so um, I had to go and do poly. I couldn't like I think he, he ended up in, in the polytechnic. When he was doing his polytechnic, he finished polytechnic and went to HND. But guess what? He said, why he was doing HND in one state? He put in for BSc in another university in another state. He was doing both at the same time, both his HND and his BSc. He said it was stressful. But he was doing this but guess what while he was doing that also somebody now told him that ah you can do i think it was cfa or cfi one of these financial courses i don't know which one they do what name um this is just this course they do that all these accountants do and he started doing it so he was doing three things at the same time he said there are times that he will be reading for two exams at the same time but guess what he said when he left school the first person he met he went to live with the person in lagos he didn't even know the person, somebody recommended him. He said, go and live with this person in Lagos. When he got there, the person said, well, I work at this big company. He said, but for you to work in this company, you, know, you must have a CSA certificate. He said, ah. And that was how he got his first job. See how life was opening doors for him. If he was lazy, he would have a CFA certificate because he would say, ah, I'm in two different schools. Why would I be doing CFA again? So said, that was what got him his first job. But guess what? He did that job for many years. And then one day they sacked him. That's the story for another, not because he was not diligent, but politics in the office, because he was not becoming too good. And then some people were feeling threatened. So they let him go. But guess what? Somebody called a different company and said, you know what? This guy, they just sack him. Or you guys, you take him immediately. And boom, they took him off. All I'm saying is this. Life itself will present you many opportunities. Please take as many, no matter how small. Somebody offered you a free course, a free online course. Take the course. Don't sleep. Take the course. Somebody offered you, ah, let's go and learn this. Let's go and do this. As long as evaluate these things and make sure that you are you keep moving on. Don't don't stay at the place and say, oh, this is all that life has for me. No, that is all that you are giving yourself out of life. Life has way much. If you can, I don't want to do motivational, but if you can dream it, you can achieve it. You know what I tell myself when I get stuck somewhere. Oh, we are trying to raise money and money is not coming in. What do we do? And I ask myself, what do people do to get money? And then, okay, this. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying bad things now. I'm talking business-wise. Oh, they talk to this kind of investors. Okay, let me go and talk. No, I go, oh, this one is out of your kid. Let me talk first. And I say, oh, no, you are still too early. But then I can recommend you to this. You keep moving. All right? So that's all from me today. Um, I'll take questions and feedback right now. I think I'm... I mean, see how many times I'm really, really into. Okay, so I think I spent six minutes extra. Um, but then I think we're open to take questions. Again, I hope my goal for the entire teaching was to bring you to a point where no matter what difficulties you face in life, no matter what challenge, have that mindset that I have to keep moving forward and things will align for me. Always have that mindset. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you so, so much. Um, <laughs> that was really amazing, to be honest. Um, I have almost one page filled up already for my head. I know everybody will have others. <laughs> um, <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you so, so much. Um, I will just open it up for questions. If you have any questions you want to ask. Um, I think Ibukun raised up her hand, uh, if I'm not mistaken, and so on also. Um, so if you have a question, please, you can go ahead and ask a question. Mm. 
I'm sorry, that was actually a mistake, actually. It was a mistake. But thank you very much for the uh, class. I really appreciate it. I learned a lot. There were some things I've heard before, and then I had to hear it again to be reminded. Thank you very much. God bless, sir. Thank you so much, man. Um, cool. Any question from anybody? And if you want to type it, of course, you can do that. Um, you can type it and... Um, let me just give like two minutes to see if. Good evening, sir. I have a question, sir. Okay, okay. Right. Please clear. Uh, great. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Santi, for that enlightening session. I was really like a lot. Thank you very much. Sir. But, sir, I want to ask a question, sir. How, one, you know, they always say that, okay, um, Position yourself for opportunities, position yourself for opportunities, ensure that when opportunity comes, uh, you don't miss out on them and stuff like that stuff. But, okay, let's assume one has actually position, positioned himself for an opportunity. Now, my question is, you know, there are some opportunities that you can actually see that this is an opportunity, but there are some that you may not be able to recognize that sure. this is an opportunity. So, how can one actually recognize those unrecognizable opportunity thank you very much thank you now i like the way it takes the question or it took the question how do i recognize an unrecognizable opportunity <laughs> right and, and that's that's the truth right because in the moment permit me to use that word you don't even know it's an opportunity until after maybe some time and you're like oh and I should have done that too. That was any you now know that thinking back or that's when you now know, oh, that was an opportunity I actually missed. Right now, again, I think I should just say this here. Um, not up, don't think about it as I think that's where the mistake is. Don't think about every opportunity as something big. Think about it as things that come to you on a daily basis, certain things that come to you on a daily basis. I think. The mindset is, oh, opportunity must be something huge coming my way. Opportunity must be something like, something that makes me do something differently or gives me a complete, you know, shift. Those are the things we refer to as opportunities, right? But no, that's that's not it. Opportunities, for me, the way I think about it, are things that just show up on a daily basis. And I ever, see, if, if I'm going somewhere, and there are two, let's just say public transport, there are two public transports in front of me. I have to make a decision. That's an opportunity. Okay, which one gets me there faster and safe in a safer manner? Now, does that look like a big thing? No, it's just normal day-to-day -day life. But there are, there are how, how would I, there are things that show up for you on a daily basis. Like, for example, you are, you are just on IG and you see maybe an ad and it's something that doesn't even it's just an ad and you're like oh let me look at this and you click on it and say oh okay they are trying to do this and this and you close it but guess what as i said in our life will present something and then later two weeks after somebody so somewhere now talk about that same thing and you should know that you should get a clue that i think something somewhere wants me to pay attention to this thing that's how you recognize those unrecognizable opportunities it won't come once it won't come once there was a time, I think it was the time that I saw a book, a book title, and I just ignored it like, Mwah. and then somebody else on Twitter, after some time, just mentioned, oh, I read this book. I'm like, okay, this is the second time I've seen this book this week. I think I should pay attention to it. That's all. You know, it's not a big deal, but I chose to make it a big deal. Okay, this, this, this can't be a coincidence. Right? It's just like somebody mentioning, oh, somebody invited you to something, and then after some while, somebody else invited you to that same thing. It's not a coincidence, right? So you have to pay attention to the little details. As you mentioned, they are not recognizable in the moment. It's not something like, oh, today you know. For example, when somebody was telling me to come and learn coding, it didn't make sense. I'm like, okay, I'm studying time planning. I'm doing entrepreneurship. I'm learning business. What's my business with coding? It didn't make sense, right? But some of my friends were doing it. When we left, after many years, I'm like, oh my God, that was an opportunity missed why day-to-day -day things it was just casual it was just my friend in my room it was just casual stuff so i i i hope i've been able to answer your question somebody was raising a hand the other time 
Um, yes. Um, Darren Larry, just confirm, has he answered your question? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you very much, sir. I'm good to be. Thank Perfect. you. Um, I think it was... Where is the person? Deborah. Okay, she just jumped back. I didn't know about Deborah. Um, okay, sir. Um, thank you, sir. Sir, I want to add, uh, my question is based on the recipe for recommendation. You talked about like leaving people and places better than we met them. Um, for example, mm -hmm. you are privileged like to work in a place and you misbehave. Let me put it that way. Um, you did not realize how um, misbehave. How can you redeem your rep uh, reputation? Hmm. Okay. If I hear your question correctly, you walk somewhere and then you misbehaved, but at the moment you didn't recognize that you probably were misbehaving or you misbehaved, and then later on, you just it came to your mind that oh you did this and it was wrong right okay, yes so exactly see again i told you there are no mistakes right it's what we make of them it's what we make of them that makes them yeah. a mistake please always in that situation write a very lovely message and send it to the person whoever probably your boss or whoever it was that was in control at that point oh sir a so 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 point i didn't know i was doing this and it was wrong but i've come to an understanding that i was just Tell them how you come to that knowledge that, oh, I was misbehaving and I didn't know. So I've just come to the understanding that, oh, when I was doing this, it was actually wrong of me. I shouldn't have done this and this and this. And it was, it was, it was just out of ignorance. Um, I'm sorry. I'm not writing this to probably for so that you get me back. It was just to acknowledge that I did something wrong and I'm acknowledging it and send that kind of message. This is what will happen. The person would even might ignore you and not reply. But guess what? The person in his mind knows that, oh, this person is maturing. And then this person is in the future, somebody I can relate to it. So you have to come clean. I think that's one thing again I've learned this year. Don't be afraid. Come clean and just say, hey, even if you need help, don't be afraid. There are people that I thought, oh, would never help me with certain things. And I just write a very good message and I sent it to the person. And I got the reply. And said, ah, no, 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 it's not a problem. Do you understand? It's not as if, oh, me speaking, I've not messed up in a couple of things. No. It's just that this year I've just learned that, oh, even though I've messed up here, I can see, oh my goodness, I can write a sweet message. And then go to Chargivity. Write a very sweet message. Now be honest. Be honest. Honesty is important. Be honest and be humble enough. The person will read it, acknowledge it, and move on. The person might not call you. The person might not even say thank you or anything, but the person has read it. If opportunity show up in the future, that person will probably call you. Why? Because the person knows that this person has matured or has come to understanding. I hope I answered your question, Deborah. It might be a tough one. It might be yes, a tough I... one, but always do all things yeah. out of honesty and since you have now come to a place of understanding oh this thing i did was bad be honest and say well, i was wrong and move on and that's one thing i i think i wanted to mention but i left out of the slide be humble and try to live peacefully with everybody don't say because this person did me bad i would dream bad no don't say because this person was not good to me i would not be good no that's not the standard you had to hold your own standard not people not living by people's standard or the way people treat you no you don't become a better person that way. And see, the truth is this. If I do you bad and you do me bad, let me let me just use that link. I don't even think that's the correct English. But let me just use that as an analogy. If I do something bad, you do something bad to me and I do something bad to you. Guess what? The other person who did something bad knows she did something bad. But because she did it bad, the person also believes that you are of the same kind of nature. And you are not. You have a higher standard. If you don't, if you reciprocate with good, then the person now says, oh, okay, I did something. Now, the person will not, see, uh, wicked people will be wicked people. But deep down in their heart, they know that uh, this person is, is not the way I, I am. They know, right? So don't lower your standard. Don't lower your ethics because of somebody else. No. Try as much as it depends on you. That's what even my Bible says. 
to live in peace with everybody. Do you know why? One day in the future, you will all see life is a very let me tell you, it was a very funny place. You will meet some people somewhere, and you'll now be like, ah. And if you are in school today, please let me just say this last thing. If you are still in the university today, please don't treat some of your classmates as trash. Don't treat some of your guys. These are the people I this is my cohort. This is people I talk to. I don't talk to these people. Don't do that. Now, of course, you can't if you are if you're 100 in the class, you can't have like a good relationship with all hundred, but don't have bad relationship with any. Don't have have a talking relationship with all hundred. All hi, what's up, what's up? Uh, what's up, what's up? Have that. The truth is this, you would need it. Some of them might be people that will recommend you. Some of them might be people who would speak about you. Some of them might be people that you need to get to certain places. So treat everybody nicely and good and be at peace with everyone and make sure everybody, at least make sure that everybody's at peace with you. Try and always do that. Okay, I don't know if there's any other question. Now, some of these things might look like, oh, this is so sweet to say. <laughs> yeah, Elizabeth. Elizabeth, oh, go ahead. Yes, um, good evening, sir. Thank you good for evening. the presentation and all. So um, my question is that, what if you have an idea that you want to implement like at the at the particular moment, but you don't have the capacity to implement that idea? Then maybe years later, you now see people implement that same idea that you wanted to do then, mm -hmm. but you didn't have the capacity to do it. Like, if you have another type of idea like that, what can someone do in that type of situation? Thank you. Thank you, Elizabeth. So my first question, go and work for that person. My, or my first thought is, if you had an idea about something, and somebody after because you couldn't execute it because you don't have capacity and somebody is executing please go and work with that person you'll be a great addition to the person if the person of course is workable with in quotes but the first <laughs> advice i'll give you is go to the person and say hey i had this idea several years ago i couldn't execute it but now i see that you are doing it and this is the way I also thought about it. I think if I work for you, you would like what I, my, my value proposition. I can help you with these, 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 this, and this. Because while I was thinking about the idea, I thought about how to do this, 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 and this. And I know if you do this, 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 and I can bring that value to your company or to, to whatever that project is. So that's the first thought. See, there are no competitions. There are no. And out of that thing, you will not be surprised that even you, you can now break out in the future. Now, not not because you fought or anything, but now build bigger products. That's why you will see, for example, there are people they call, oh, um, how would I call them now? I'm trying to get the word now. Okay, let me use the Nigerian version. For example, there are people who started working for Flutterwave. Flutterwave is one of the biggest payment companies in Nigeria. But now they have their own payment company too. Does that mean that they are competing with Flutterwave? No. It's just that as you, as you work forward, as you get better understanding and then you know how to do things better, and they be, see that person now becomes when you want to start your own thing. The person now says, I know I, I work with this person and I know I can trust, I can, you know, I can vouch for this person. Let me tell you something that happened two or three days ago. A friend was sharing with me, right? Um, a young a young lady and a friend wanted to start a company. In fact, they already started a company and they were trying to raise money. Permit me that I'm using fundraising and I'm using startup exam because that's where I'm playing right now, right? And these are things I see on a daily basis. And she was trying to get money from an, an investor. Then the investor reached out to her former boss, the man she was working with, and said, hey, um, one of your former staff is trying to start a company and um, is asking for this amount in investment. What do you think? Guess what the boss said? If I saw the WhatsApp chat. Guess what the boss said? The guy said, nah, that when she was working with me, I had to hand older and everything. She couldn't really do anything by herself. So I don't know, maybe she's, he just said she still needs time to grow. I don't think she's the right person to start this kind of company. And that was all, that was all she lost her investment. Simple. Again, I told you, recipe for recommendation. Treat people well and be diligent at what you do. Now, of course, they will just send her email and say, oh, I'm sorry, we cannot invest in you at this time. But she didn't know what transpired. Okay, so that's just all I'll say. Okay, 
Um, I hope the question was answered. Yes, sir. And I have another one. Please go ahead. So, um, the, um, my second question is that, um, is it possible for a medical student to learn different skills, like with the stress of the school and all that? Is it possible to like maximize that time to learn a lot of skills before graduating? That is a really tough question. <laughs> Do you know why? Oh, medical students are, are one of the most stressed people. I think medical and maybe law students, all right? However, this is what I'm going to say. Number one, just because they said, is it possible? Yes. Everything is possible if you have the determination to do it. Everything. Everything is possible. Right? What you now want to check is, what are my priorities? How do I split my time? Some things will have to suffer for some things. Meaning that if I want to learn a new skills, I will have to reduce my outdoor events. Because aside from going to class and reading my medical books, I now have to create new time to stay to learn these new skills meaning that that new time might be might be for example 12 a.m to 3 a.m meaning that my sleep will have to suffer for it but if you want to make it happen you can make it happen it's just that you now have to create a new balance system with your time allocation do you understand yes sir. all right thank you sir thank you all right thank you um yeah this is i can go ahead uh -uh. Yeah, good evening, Samuel. Good evening. Thank you very much for sharing with us. God bless you. Now, to my question, I'm currently a cloud process engineer at my workplace, okay. and I'm looking to become a cloud consultant. Okay. But now, my current um, place of work, my MD is requiring that I become a business unit manager, like developing oh. business for them. Yeah. And it is not something I really have interest in. How do you think I can work around that? Hmm. That's that's quite unique. Because even by the time you start developing new businesses for them, to be honest, you become a consultant for them. I don't know if, if you're getting me. Because if you want to become a cloud consultant on your own, new businesses will have to come to your individual businesses will have to come to you and then you consult for them do this don't do this okay let's set this up and then do this and do this now it's the same thing if you want to start maybe your your boss is starting a new business unit and wants you to do that um i think you just have to reach an understanding and know what you want right you the new business you want to start out do you have enough let me use the word clients coming for it do you have enough people coming for you and do you have enough expertise that can attract people to come for it first thing balance that with what your boss is asking okay should i do what my boss is my, what my boss is requesting for a few more years until i can stand on my own or can i transition to a new company and still get you know my current job my current role that gives me enough time to now still be a consultant those are things you want to ask yourself because you don't want to also make short-sighted decisions, right? The most important thing is your trajectory to go to growth, right? You want to ensure that you're growing even in your career and in your personal business. So you have to evaluate that. I can't like I can't be the one to make that decision for you, right? You have to like come and say, okay, this is what my boss is requesting. How does this help my own future plan? <laughs> Do you, understand? Do you understand? Yeah, I understand. Thank you very much. And the reason I'm asking is because personally, expertise wise, I'm still working on myself here and there, like getting my hands dirty on some crucial skills that I need to. So now it's entering into the business development now is not advisable for me. And they, are, they, are, they seem not to understand in the company because there's no point building a business unit and I want to be strong on the technical part of it. Sure. So if I venture into business now, it will, it will affect my rate of moving towards what I want. That's what sure. I'm asking. Like, is, this something, is, is it advisable that I should just leave for a better place where I can work on my technicals or just start the consulting? I know no, it's not a decision you can make for me, but I just need an advice. No, no, I won't say you should start your consulting. Don't do that. Right. Now, you can do that part-time. 
we don't do that solely yet what i can say is based on what you explain right now you can try and transition into a new company with the role you desire right and then while you're learning because you just said now that you're not an expert at it for you to become a consultant people will want to bank on your expertise right um so you want to make sure that you have built that level of expertise to a level that other people can vouch for you and say hey this guy this lady can do this and then that's when you now easily become a consultant it makes your job really easy right so that's what i would say try and transition into a, a new company that helps to build your technical skills yeah thank you very much all right thank you um i think Ibukun is raising a, i don't know if they're he or she is raising yes i have sorry okay. okay so this is a quick question um sometimes early this year i no last year i got a job offer at um at a, an affiliate of um cfa company and i do sales okay but at that time i had another job so i i wanted to combine the two jobs but long story short i lost the both jobs so that i had to start again from scratch again so um right now uh, i am um, luckily for me i got this job very flexible job it's into sales was more of a more like calls um like the if I, all through this week i've been at home my job is that flexible so sometimes you have to go for some conference some conventions some showcase and stuff but it only comes in once in a while so most of the times i'm always at home so i I started applying for this job, even before I got this job, um, another job, I've been applying for the job. And today I got an email that I passed the final interview and then blah, blah, blah. I'm to start the training next week. So I'm thinking of combining the two jobs again, but I don't want to make the same mistake I made the last time. What do you think I should do? Now, the job I'm doing right now is very, very flexible, as an extremely flexible, but there's some times where you just be like impromptu calls and you know stuff like that and the pay is not really satisfying me and i cannot demand for more pay because of the nature of the job and uh, really i don't um i really don't know how to demand for more pay. so now that i have another job i don't and this one can be a little bit tricky i don't want to lose both job again so what do you think i should do i believe sales um you were into sales and i know sales uh have a way of merging two jobs together so what do you think i should do i just want an advice on that okay thank you thank you for that question um I, I like to say i'm a salesperson right and technically you know what that, that's the truth right i do tech sales and all the company i work for um business development sales partnership anything i increase revenue right and this is one thing i'll say in sales it is very difficult to combine two companies together i'll be very honest with you it is i've seen i have friends who are into tech like programmers and things like that and they work on like three different companies why because i literally do not need to like leave my house i don't need to all i just need to do is make sure that i'm on their slack channel for the different companies and i'm doing my da daily tax auto right and then i'll tell the other two companies that hey this is my main company where i'm working with so those ones can do that but for sales, it is it is it is really difficult because you your attention is always needed. Even if you are doing, for example, if you are doing inbound or outbound outbound sales, you for example, if you are setting up your LinkedIn profile, you have to set your LinkedIn profile as a salesperson to feed that a current company you're currently working with, right? Or your your so it now becomes how do I combine both? The truth is, it is difficult. It is extremely difficult. What our advice? is oosh this is this is hard <laughs> and my boss has told me don't advise people because if you advise them and they do something and it goes wrong they say it was this person that advised me to do it so it's always it's always a very tricky thing but this is what i'll do this is what i can say number one get um get a sales job in the same industry different companies but make sure it is easier right because you are almost selling similar products it helps you the band to harness your skills properly and then it helps you to close sales faster for both companies now what you now want to do is 
but get it in different geographies. So for example, there was something I used to do before. So I was doing tech sales for a company that was into software development, but the company was based out of Turkey, right? While I was doing that, I was still working as partnership manager at um, Authority Tech. But one doesn't disturb the other. Why? Because Authority Tech was in the US and I was just working remotely for them, right? So my my Turkish was doesn't know I was working with my US company, my US company doesn't know I'm working with the tech uh, with the Turkish company because I and I was doing my job effectively, right? Um and then make sure that okay, as a then there was no time clash, right? Because by the time the US is waking up, I'm done with the guys from Turkey and all of that. So you want to make sure that you're working in the same industry but different regions, right? And then try to make sure that they are all remote. Now, when it comes to tech sales, or I don't know if you are doing tech sales, I, I couldn't hear the company you mentioned earlier. I think the network was freezing. But when you're doing sales, try and also make sure that all of your sales gigs are mostly remote. It helps you a lot. If it involves you moving out and going out a lot, it will become difficult because when the other company needs you, you might not be available. And that's not good for a salesperson, right? So just try and make sure that one is probably fully remote and then the rest, the second is probably hybrid or partial remote, do you understand? And then maybe two different regions or geographies. So that's what I would advise. Oh, she has dropped off. Um, but I think she heard that. Also, there is recording, so definitely we share. Okay, share it. All right. Hi, Buko. Um, hi, Buko. Can you hear us? Yeah, can you? Sorry, my net talk went blank for a while. Sorry. Um, I don't know if you heard what he said. I I got lost <laughs> where about getting it in uh, getting the, um sales job in the same field but in different geographical locations and stuff like that. Okay, um, can you hear me now? Yes, I can. Okay, so what I was just saying was number one, you want to get a role in the same industry. So, for example, for me, I just do tech sales, right? um i've got to turn on some other offers because i just know that i will not do well here and it's not a product i know too well or it's not an industry i know too well right so i just knew i was going to struggle um so make sure that you're selling products that are similar that you know really well and then you want to make one of them completely remote not hybrid or anything then the rest the second job you want to get could be hybrid right because one is full remote it doesn't right, require you to be anywhere. And then the one that requires you to be, um, you know, to move out and then go to places, that one can be the second one where the full remote is the main job, right? Because your full remote, in in quotes, you can get your job done as a salesperson um, just online. And you can do that any time of the day by setting, you know, automated mails and things like that um, and setting up campaigns in different regions. So all I'm saying is, Try and get one that is full remote and then get one that is hybrid. That's the best way I've seen that you can combine a sales job. If not, what I would just advise is get one good sales job that pays you really well because sales is very hard. So if you can get one job that pays you really well, just stick to that one. I don't know if you heard me, Buko. Oh, <laughs> I think that network is bad. Yeah, but well, no problem. Um, I'll just ask her to watch the part again so that she can get the information. Um, so uh, thank you so much, Samson. Um, this, uh, for me, it was really, really helpful. Um, then it was really helpful for me. Uh, pick out some things that I need to work on, and also I need to check out uh, Madam CJ Walker um, to learn some certain things from her so, and understand her uh, experience on food and how that could well, like, give a perspective uh, to what I do. So, yeah, thank you so much. And also about the 
the part you mentioned where sometimes some information just begin to lead you to some part. At first, it, you don't even recognize it, but later on, that you begin to um, see that those are pointed to what you are doing today. Um, I mean, my idea of finance also came about from just a single pointer. Um, I studied mechanical engineering, so even right from campus, I never thought I would be going into finance in any way. Um, but then it happens and it happens, and then we are here. Um, so it was really helpful for me to be able to look back and see some of those things that you mentioned and then see how they have played out at the journey also. Um, so thank you so much. I know everybody has learned one or two things and we are going to definitely implement it in our daily life. Uh, once again, I want to appreciate you. Thank you so much for accepting our invitation. <laughs> uh -huh. Thank you for the invite. Yeah, thank you for that application. And, and one of the points that you mentioned also, uh, that is um, reaching out to people and uh, that nobody is out of your reach. Um, sure. I, I, I I know when I wanted to the program as uh, such, and I wanted to reach out to Rufus, and um, I reached out to him via email uh, at first, and it wasn't working out. Uh, I had to use some other means to reach out to him. Yeah, I think he's, he's more on IG. If you want to get to him, he's always on IG. <laughs> and it was like, this guy, you're persistent. Okay, I will come. Don't worry, I will come. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I, 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 I could easily um, um, connect with what you said. So, thank you so much. I know that's people have learned. And um, you don't know how best to appreciate it afterwards, but yeah. No, no. So, <laughs> thank, you for you, right? thank you. And thank everyone for coming and staying this long. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course. All right. Um, let me stop the recording.